Hello there. Glad to have you join us on the program this week. I'm Gloria Umezioke. Uh, the BPP is aimed at formulating and implementing appropriate policies on procurement and contract awards. The federal government produced a guideline to entrench due process into the public procurement processes. Well, we spoke to the Director General of the Bureau for Public Procurement. But up ahead. The federal government has asked the 12 states that are yet to implement the public procurement laws and the award of contracts to, as a matter of urgency, conclude the process. Take a listen. Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Vice President Nama De Sambo at the first national conference on public procurement, an event that drew procurement officers and directors from the 36 states of the Federation. The federal government believes that the state should not hesitate in identifying with the procurement process that wipes away corruption in the polity. Let me stress that the implementation of the procurement reform goes beyond passage of laws. A great deal of political will is needed for its full implementation. I, therefore, urge the remaining 12 states as a matter of urgency to conclude the processes of enacting their own laws and also taking measures to implement them. Since establishment in 2007, only the federal government has operated the system efficiently. From 2009 to date, the Bureau has saved about 528 billion naira in project reviews, established a procurement cadre in the system, issued standard building documents for all classes of procurement, translated the act into Hausa language, Igbo, and Yoruba languages. Procurement audits are regularly conducted around only the MDAs to identify areas of weaknesses and abuse. The estimates of transparency international is that worldwide $400 billion a year are lost in terms of corrupt practices in public procurement. You saw in our own case the numbers that we were losing. So this is why it is critically important that we follow these reforms. The keynote speaker says states can't ignore the obvious, which is competition, and to ensure that the right people and the right contractors are doing the jobs at all times. Experts say Nigeria stands to benefit from what is happening here, even as the BPP is optimistic that this conference will come up with solutions that will make states that are still in doubt get to imbibe the culture of transparency and accountability in public procurement. On our interview this week, I spoke to the Director General of the Bureau for Public Procurement, Engineer Emeka Ezeb. Engineer Ezeb, welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, begin. We know that uh, subscribing to one set of national procedures for public procurement has always been a challenge. And now with the you know, just concluded uh, conference on procurement, what really were the major findings and recommendations that we can take home? Yeah, thank you. Most of the major recommendation is that, one, most state governments are eager to cane into the federal government. Two, most governors are committed to good governance. Three, there are one way or the other attempts by state governments to establish what's called due process office many a time in the office of the governor or in the office of budget and economic planning. However, we also noted that the implementation of those intentions and laws had not been as effective as in the federal system principally due to the fact that um, most of them are still not very, very conversant with the real reasons why those ones are set up. Most of the states, you know. Yes, yes. Beyond the rhetorics of I have the process of this, like Mr. President said in his speech, it goes beyond setting up the office. It really requires that even the governor would deny himself the discretion that perhaps most of the time is they are tempted to exercise in the application of a word of contracts. So the law denies them those just. And so we have to be extremely, extremely be committed to del delivering more for less. 
which is really what the keynote speaker emphasized. And which is really the issue right now. I, I really know the issue, but the intention of every government is to deliver more for less. If you listen to all slogans, all campaigns of all political parties and all contestants, they have always, at the back of their mind, wanted to deliver to the people. But the truth of the fact is that the resources available at various states and even at the federal are not uh, sufficient to fulfill all the campaign promises all at a go. And so the need to have a set of rules that will ensure that those promises are delivered at best possible cost when people need them and in the right places are understood and implemented. But the thing is, even when the resources are available, we still have fraudulent contracts, you know, everywhere. No, 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 the, the funds are never available. There's never a time the funds are available. And that's something we must get out of our psyche. Nigerians have been made to believe that we have money. We are a poor nation in real terms. Yes, we are. If you check at how much the federal budget is and how much of it is funded through borrowing because we run deficit budget. If you fund your home income on deficit, then you're not a rich person. Even at the personal level. If at the end of the month I earn, say, 200,000, and my expenditure is 300,000, then I have to look for extra 100,000 somewhere to supplement my budget. And that's what most Nigerians understand. And that is the same with all most of the states of the Federation. They have deficit budget, meaning that they borrow to fund some of their projects. But even at that, we still have a lot of uh, fraudulent cases and here and there. Anywhere you have human beings. But we, of course, we know Nigeria, it's, it's spec we have a peculiar situation. We have, okay, the BPP recently announced that it saved over 500 billion. Yeah. Now, how did that happen? And of course, that is not the only amount it has successfully saved. The way it happens is that in any system where you don't have regulations, businessmen, and everybody for that matter, really, will take advantage of any system for his own personal benefit. It doesn't matter, there are no angels anywhere in the world. And that's why those systems work, because they put systems in place that make people not behave like animals. People have a tendency to behave in a manner that is consistent with their personal interests and ambitions. But there has to be public rules that guide them so that people are put in check not to go overboard, to behave otherwise. How successful has this procurement act been? Excellent. And that's why I'm, I, 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 I can beat my chest and say that we have been able to succeed in instilling this new process consciousness in the mind and hearts of Nigerians, public officers, contractors, uh, civil society, professional associations, that even though we are not yet there 100%, we can be because we're not in heaven, it's only heaven in fine perfection, we still have some issues that day in, day out, as we're bringing out ways of blocking the loopholes. Others are also devising ingenious ways of beating the rules we're putting in place. And so constantly, we have to be on our toes to match them to be sure as they are bringing, just like the internet, as people are getting uh, software, as others who are hackers will be developing the anti, and then those who are going to do anti-spy and all that, uh, virus, antivirus, will be also spending time to divine a system that will counter that. So that's where it is with us. We are constantly on our toes, watching the market, watching the behavior of the actors to see when they begin to abuse the system so that we find regulations and rules to counter them. If you close your eyes, it's just like saying, why do people continue to go to church every Sunday? In spite of the fact that we have churches and religious organizations, many years, you hear the same thing over and over again because the human being has the tendency to forget. You know, people will still express their doubts, you know, even when you make such an announcement, you know. So in terms of ratings and percentage, how would you rate the, the, the number of leakages you have blocked in the system? You see, in the beginning when we started, it was huge. And as people get to the compliance level improves, the amount of leakages will continue to low, I mean the amount of savings will continue to decrease. Because really, those leakages were not necessarily because people were fraudulent, no. It was because business people would take advantage of any weak system for their own personal benefit. It didn't mean that people were stealing the money. No. 
It, it, it meant that the private, greedy private sectors were making flyaway profit. And if you were in my position and I noticed that there's, you guys are not understanding the rules and I can get away with three millions, why well, can't? And if you want their position, you will. It doesn't mean that the public officials are corrupt or that you yourself, the contractor, is corrupt. No, it doesn't. It just meant that you're a clever guy operating in a system that the operators don't understand the rules and therefore I'm exploiting it for my own personal gain. Is there an understanding right now? <laughs> yeah, the understanding. Everybody has got to know that you know what I know and I know what you know and therefore you have to play according to the rules. And so if you make a profit, you make a profit as is industry and market driven under competition. So you can make a you can make a flyaway profit. You can make a profit that is reasonable, that is enough to keep the system running and then improve efficiency because there's competition. And when there's competition, people bring out their best in innovation and then profit of course will still be there, but it's not to be as if there were no competition. Let's examine this challenge of of instilling due process and all of that, you know. The federal government claims it has succeed, succeeded in some measure, but the thing is, I know you want the states to inculcate this, about 24 have latched onto it. The, the remaining 12, how do you intend to go about this? Yeah, but what we've done today is to encourage the 24 states and thank the governors and encourage them to give those authorities the same level of protection and free handed we have gotten at the, at the federal level that the president has given us, and then encourage the other states that have not, that it is their own interest to have those laws, really. It's their own interest. One, if you do so, you have a, a legal framework to even prosecute those who go against the law. Yeah. Right now, if you don't have a state law and you catch somebody, there's nothing you can do. If you take him to court, there's no law that he has violated, so to say. But if you have a law, then it would have provided the mechanism that will punish people. And in any society where there are no sanctions and incentives, people have no reason to behave ethically. And so the whole essence is really to encourage those people to enact the law and then find a collaboration with the federal government who share experiences because basically Nigeria has one economy. Even though we are running a federation, the federal government is fairly independent, states are independent, but they are running one economy. If the federal government keeps about 40 or 52 percent or so, then the states are keeping the others. And the local government, when I say state, I mean state and local government, the other 48% of their about, percent of the federal federation money is spent in the other economy. And it's good that they also understand the same rules. Again, next it is here for business operators. So that some, some guy operating Lagos will not have the same set of rules guiding the operations in, say, in Taraba. And then somebody in River State will understand if he goes to Kano. So he can operate across any part of the country. The rules are the same. The principles are the same. Competition. Okay, just hold on to that thought. We'll come back to those who flout the rules against due process and procurement of services. We're still with the Director General of the Bureau of Public Procurement, Mr. Emeka Ezi. Please join us again. Up to now.